to Mike Chank Waifu Waifu. Check, Mike. Check, waifu, waifu. Martel, is that you? We here. What's up, Paulo? This is episode two fifty seven of Mike Check, waifu, waifu. As always, is brought to you by Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mike Check, waifu, waifu is where you get early access to the video version of this podcast. It's where you can get access to Patreon exclusive podcast, the conversational podcast, the after story, where we sit and talk about whatever we want: video games, movies, TV shows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get access to Mike Check Mangas, which is returning soon with the uh, wrap up of the anime that we were reading on Mike Check Manga. So if you subscribe, stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. Uh, Take talks and other content over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is where you can support us. We appreciate all the support we get there. Shout out to the Patreon producers that support us at the highest tier, which is the Weeb tier. Christian, the archivist, Rob from Dad Needs to Talk Podcast. Check out Dad Needs to Talk Podcast. That's our guy. Safir, J. Lee Trey from Show Go High, Ked the Pro from Chaotic Culture and Show Go High. Explicitly, more from Explicitly coming soon. All for one, Matt, Monique Williams, our guy Nachi, Simi Sensei, Frozen, Rob Stone, and last but certainly not least, T Money Fingers. Thank you so much for producing this and many, many episodes of the podcast. We truly couldn't do it without you. Now, my check, Waifu Waifu, is the anime podcast is brought to you at 9.30 a.m. CT. We bring you anime seasonal discussions as well as whatever we want to talk about in the anime space. We got good news for you guys today. We decided to bring back, get to know Mike Check Waifu Waifu, which for the uninitiated back in back in the early days of Mike Check Waifu Waifu, we had a list of like 100 questions that we would ask with a random number generator before we go into our break to just get to know us a little bit better. So we're bringing that back with the random number generator before we go into break this week. Now tell, as we start off every episode, I got to ask, how you feeling? So week's been amazing. I've I've had a great week. Today? Nah, bro. (laughs) Now look, look, look. It's not to say, not to say it's been a bad day because I don't have bad days. Yeah. I don't believe in bad days. But boy, let me tell you, I woke up at seven thirty. No, it wasn't. It was it was earlier than that. It was like like six forty something like that. Mm-hmm. I went to sleep at at three forty five, almost exactly. It's like when I remember looking at the clock. It was it was probably three forty three. I think is what the actual time was. But I remember looking at the clock. Looking at my phone, putting it down, said, oh, "Okay, I have to go to sleep," because I was struggling. I was struggling last night trying to go to sleep, bro. That's so crazy. This morning, <laughs> that's so crazy. You say that because I also didn't fall asleep until four o'clock in the morning. And and hear me out. I I looked at my computer. I sat down at my computer, had it on. And I was like, "I'm gonna play a game." I was thinking about playing that body cam, and I was like. Fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, like no. And the issue, the issue was, is that I was like, I, I, I was in the bed by like nine. I got up, walked around, got back in the bed. Got up, started cleaning a little bit, washing mm-hmm. clothes. Got back in the bed. Got up, started doing more stuff. Got back, and I was like, bro, why is none of this making me sleepy? Why is none of it making me sleepy? I had a big meal before I got in the bed. Everything. I'm like, I should be sleepy. Nope. Couldn't sleep. So we here. I am. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm a little tired, but I'm excited to do this. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm excited, bro. Yeah. Big, big episode uh, this week. Now, here's the thing. So for me, <laughs> I, I, so I just got this uh, treadmill, right? Mm-hmm. So I just got this treadmill and for the past two days, I walked about 
about thirty thousand or almost thirty thousand. So I've I've done about five and six oh. five and six miles uh, the the previous couple of days, and as that would make me so hungry again. Like I would eat, I would get up and eat, and then I will I would I would run for for five five miles roughly, not really run, but mostly walk for five miles on the treadmill while watching anime, which is so so great by the way, and. <laughs> I would get hungry, so I'm like, "Fuck it, see, I'm 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 ready to eat again," and that's that's the problem. So what I did was I, I I'm and I was since I was so exhausted, I would go to sleep, but I would I wouldn't take a nap. I would go to sleep, like I would sleep for five, <laughs> six yeah. hours. I'm like, "Fuck," and I would wake up at like six o'clock and just be up. So for me, I was up at like f- till four o'clock in the morning, and I'm I mostly been Christian, our archivist, our Patreon producer for this particular moment as to why I didn't fall asleep until four a.m. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, and we're going to get to that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But before I get to that, so what was your episode of the week this week? I don't want to tell you. I want you to say yours first. Uh, my episode of the week this week is going to be a different one. Mm-hmm. Not, be because it, not because it was better than everything else. But what the episode represented for me personally, it was, wait, let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, it was Grandpa and Grandma Turn Young Again is my episode of the week this week. Very, very fun episode. Um, and again, it wasn't better than just about anything else I watched this week, but I enjoyed it so much, mostly because I love the initial D reference they had in it. I love what was going on between the, the two younger, the grandkids. Like it was, it was a sweet episode that I enjoyed that I feel like I wanted to give some love to this week. So Grandpa and Grandma Turn Young Again, is getting love again. It wasn't better than anything else because I got some stuff to say about something else that that dropped, which was the best episode this week. But I'm gonna wait until you give yours. I'm All double right, dipping, cool. basically. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I like that. I like a little double dip every once in a while because <laughs> I do have a secondary episode of the week that technically I think is better than the one I wanted to mention. But I want to mention this one specifically because. I mean, I'm not I'm not always on the internet to look to see what people are saying, but Yada Garasu, bro. I was thoroughly I thought I predicted this episode when it was kinda happening. You know what I mean? We and I'm not I'm not going I don't want to dive too much into it, but I, I felt like I predicted this episode, but I wasn't I wasn't right when I when I was like watching it. And I think that this episode was really good. Uh Yada Garasu, I think it's doing something that I really, really like in a lot of ways. Um, and I feel like it's, it might be slept on. Like, I feel like it might be slept on. Slept on. It's, it's really good. And I'm not, I, don't, I don't say it's really good as in like it's doing something that's brand new or groundbreaking. I just think this is a really good episode this week. 100%. <laughs> so. and, and, to, and for my double dip, that was going to be the one. That's like, crazy. Yada Garasu was going to be else. <laughs> no, it was definitely going to be that because it was it was the best the best episode of of anything this week. Purse, so, oh, okay, it's tied between Jobless and this one. Okay, v- very right. very close. But Yada Garatu for me this week was my favorite, absolute favorite episode. Um, it was spectacular, absolutely spectacular for everything that you said. So what's funny is that again, sorry, Christian the archivist. I, I know this might be a tough one, but if you can find the conversation to where we predict it. What we thought was going to happen in Yadagaratu, I believe it's an earlier season episode. Spoiler mm-hmm. talk we did to make it to narrow it down. If you can find that for us, Christian, that'd be fantastic because I wanted, I want to say that either one of us says something like this. I think it was along the lines of me saying that mm-hmm. I don't think who, who, who I don't think who the antagonist was was the actual antagonist. So that's all right. I'm gonna say for now because we're definitely gonna take this as a spoiler talk in the second half of the show for sure. But that's that's I, I do remember saying that. But I wanna mm-hmm. I wanna be clear that that's that's I, and I do think you did say that. And I think I was trying to be contrarian and saying like nah it, it, I mean come on bro right but I, nah we gotta we gotta <laughs> figure that out because that that'd be crazy a crazy prediction. Cause that was unexpected, unexpected. It was. So it was a very well done, very well done episode. Um, but to get into the show, tell man, what's what what you watch new? You told me you watch something new, and you said, "Oh, you want to start there?" Oh no, wh- wherever you want to start. Let's let's start no, wherever we, we you want to start. start there. We can start there. So, um, I uh, I, I'm I'm a part time employee at 
Geek Squad at Best Buy. And um, one of the guys I work with, well, we know the archivist. And then I have a, a, a guy I work there named Brandon, but his, his sister also works there. And she was like, have you seen Paprika? I was like, you did tell me to watch that like six months ago. <laughs> that was a long one. Yeah, she told me like six months ago I should watch it, and I never watched it. Um, oh, no, it's an older one, ain't it? It is. But, bro, no, have, have you seen it? I think I might have. It sounds super familiar. It's like rated under like Izakai. Um, you know what? No, this ain't it. Is this it? Because somebody recommended this to me. I believe it was Moody. It could have been, right? And it's a Back very like. It's a very trippy movie. Um, and I say trippy as a person who's never tripped uh, other than over his own feet. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it has a very... It wasn't this one, but... It's a very trippy experience to watch it. It's about dreams um, and going into dreams and turning dreams into reality, so to speak. Okay, yeah, definitely. Wasn't and this movie... <laughs> So I, I was watching a movie and I, I Googled, I Googled it. And one of the first things I saw was, is paprika structurally all over the place? And the answer is yes, bro. This movie is literally structurally all over the place, but it's good. If that 78% makes sense. 78% on any list. Yeah. And I, I think 78% is solid. And I even think that if you... Let's say we was to break this down like how we were doing the Kendrick Lamar thing. <laughs> I think that there there is a, a space to like say that looking at this, there are so many metaphors, allegories, and different combinations of things in this show to say like, movie. yeah, yeah, the movie. Sorry, <laughs> so in this movie to say that this is definitely deserving of more if we're looking at it from a purely objective standpoint. Because I think that if I'm looking at my my enjoyment factor, like, did I enjoy it? Like, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. But I was like, I, in my mind, I'm like looking at it. I'm like, this is actually kind of crazy. If you think about this from like a, a human standpoint and then like what they're trying to introduce to you. I think objectively, it could be higher for we're looking at what it when did it come out 2006. I think it could be higher than a 78. Um, it's it's. It's it's kind of wild, bro. Um, it's crazy because when you put it in perspective, okay, this is one of my favorite studios, Studio Madhouse. Um, studio Madhouse obviously did uh, Free Ren and, and um, Overlord and all kinds of just great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is I didn't realize, and this is kind of a side tangent to this, but I didn't yeah. realize that Madhouse been in the game since 1990, 1980, 1987. Okay, I'm still going. Um, they've been in the game for such a long time, too. Like, since 1973, they've been in the game, basically. Did they, what they, did they do Astro Boy or something? <laughs> Bro, I don't fucking know. They did so much shit. I mean, they did Black uh, Black Lagoon, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like, they, they are legends. Like, Madhouse is extremely, extremely talented. Wow. Wow. But I, I go to say that when you look at some of the things that this is supposed to be like similar to, they got Paranoia Agent. Yeah, yeah. They got Wonder Egg Priority, ID Invaded. Um, I don't know if you've seen Perfect Blue, but there's like, there is so much like, cause th this is categorized as like a, a, a fantasy mystery, psychological sci-fi thriller, right? Mm -hmm. And it's definitely that. Like, and I would even say, if you if you look at it contextually, this could borderline horror because I was like, this is kind of crazy, bro. This is it, it felt almost frightening, but it was it was a mystery. Um, I definitely would recommend it as a as just like a sit down and watch. I'm not gonna necessarily say it's an it's the easiest watch because there are things I had to rewind just to make sure I was I guess like fully downloading what the heck was going on in front of me. Yeah. Um, and that's normally not a thing I have to do. I normally don't have to rewind and make sure I caught the detail. But bro, this show is definitely one of them shows that has a lot of detail in it. And I feel like if you could just sit down and just look at the background constantly and always find stuff. Um kind of like you do a Madagotary. Like I still yeah. like it's it's just so much in that show that I think about or I did I see it as like wow that you don't even think about until they mention it in a different season, three seasons down the road. Did did you ever get to that uh that kill shot fight? I think you saw that, didn't you? <laughs> 
You did? Okay. All right. No, because that's a that's a, that isn't in the um yeah. realm of con- the, the the order in which I was watching it. <laughs> right. Um, right. But um, let me slide to something new that I watched. Okay. Which is weird because this show came out this year. It was a part of this season, and I completely missed it, which is shocking. Okay. Because. Uh, as Christian the Archivist said, this is a polo ass anime because this is a studio apartment, good lighting, and Angel included. Um, this is a show that came out like it started March 30th, so it was like damn near the start of spring, a little bit after. And um, it, it's <laughs> let me just let me just categorize it. The most recommended show for this show is The Angel Next Door Spoilers Me Rotten. I don't know how because this is a harem like almost oh not okay it's just classified as a harem but it's not the high school D&D type of harem or something like tasteless right this is the most fun tasteful romance comedy of I've seen now I only watched it's 11 episodes out right now um I only watched 10 of them last night (laughs) <laughs> which is okay. part, part of the reason why I was up until four o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. Shout, out, shout out to you, Christian. But it, it, it is his, it's, 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 it's his fault. Yeah, it's definitely his fault. But I'm glad that he did because this is so good, man. This is another one where the main character is fantastic, super nice kid. Um, it's kind of atypical, be usual, kind of like the rompy, uh, rompiness to it. But like the the main character, uh, the first okay, it's, it's a, okay. Let me just start all over. It's a sixteen year old high school student who was living alone because his parents works overseas. He's living in a, an apartment that his auntie rents to him, um, and he's he's just living there by himself. He's you know kind of slogging through life, eating convenience store meals, and he's super super just very uh, I guess you can call it almost an adult. Independent, yeah, like he's very independent for a 16 year old kid. Um, until one morning he wakes up with this girl on his balcony. The girl on his balcony is a literal angel, she's she's an okay. angel who was sent down by God. God said, Hey, learn, learn as much about humans as you possibly can. Um, and she landed on his balcony, she slept on his balcony. He woke up and he basically gives her a place to stay and his apartment, and they get to know each other in, in different ways. And it's like a it's like a, a, a cute little, and it's not like a, a forced romance thing. It's just kind of stuff happening naturally, which I love. This team of girls basically form around them, but it's, it's mostly about friendship and just realizing how it, it pays to be just a great person and his, and his natural, um, I'm trying not to spoil most of it, but his natural, right. um, his natural character just have this, this thing that draws people towards him because he's just he's just a cool dude, basically. And it's it's pleasant. It's been a pleasant watch. A nice little comedy. I chuckled a few times. It's not it's not like um a hundred girlfriends or anything like that. It's nothing yeah. crazy or, or tasteless. It, it's a beautiful show. Very well I'm animated. Really tasteless. Huh? I was saying hundred girlfriends wasn't really tasteless. No, no, but, I, I'm, about I'm just talking about in as as an overall effect. <laughs> it only has a 65 on adding list. It deserves more than that. It's it's a mm. very good show. It's done by a, a little bit newer studio. This studio did how how not to summon a demon lord. Um, yeah, but I yeah. was uh, looking at all these recommendations that are under, and all of these shows, at least the ones I've seen, are good. Like Tony Cow over the moon for you. Yeah, Angel Next Door, Hygie Galaxy Hero. Next Door. Yeah, Hygie Hero. It's very uh, that. It's very all of that. It's fun. It's a fun show. I think it's worth a watch, man. I'm I'm it's only a couple episodes left. Oh well, it's I only have a couple episodes left. The next one comes out in in five days. So this week will be when it ends, funny enough. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like I, I'm I'm having a good time with it. I can't believe if it was it completely missed. Yeah, just you know, it happens. That happens. That's why it's nice to go back and watch some stuff every yes. once in a while. Yes, and to have a community like ours that lets you know, hey, listen, this is a show that y'all might like. So right. shout, shout out to him for creating a Discord thread on that one. I'm so, so glad he did though. It's good. Um, I do want to talk about two more things. Um, they both begin with an O. Um, one of them is because my son uh, started his One Piece journey today. 
um <laughs> he came to me and said he's like daddy can i make a profile on crunchyroll and i said of course. Got profile shout out to Crunchyroll." i'm like i'm like of course what do you, okay so he goes and makes his profile and i said what do you want to make a profile for me me and my wife sit on his bed he's like i want to watch one piece and he nice. goes one piece and turns and i'm like oh my god nice. now, I, I ain't gonna lie to you um he's watched anime before and I'm not the biggest One Piece fan. I'm not going to say like it's the best thing I've ever watched, but I do think that it's probably one of the most expansive and grand anime because it yeah. literally has more context and information than 99.9% of anime, right? That's a fact. Um, but I, I was very excited because I do think that's a huge undertaking. He's watched probably about like eight episodes a day, which I'm like, bro. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. That's that's uh, polo watched, numbers. I'm telling you. But he watched he watched it today and I was I was I was hyped. Um the other thing is Oblivion Battery. Now, Oblivion Battery, I'm not going to I'm not even going to front like it's like my favorite anime or something I'm necessarily super duper enjoying. I do think it's good. Um especially for a sports anime cuz there are a decent amount of these I'm just like kind of like okay with. Like a uh, blue lock was okay, mad decent, and not even mad decent. It was like eh, right? Whereas like uh, I can't remember the other soccer one. That one was better. But blue lock, a bl- yeah, blue not not blue lock. Blue lock was okay. It was the other one that was like, I- just Iowashi, Iowashi, yeah, Iowashi, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, that one was actually I think good. Um, but it was more about development. Um, but Oblivion Battery. This episode was about a center fielder. And I got to say, some of these characters, it, and it's like, I know that this anime has to be centered towards girls <laughs> and people who play baseball, right? Because none of these characters, I think, are necessarily 100% interesting to a guy if you're not, like, uh, into baseball, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not a big sports dude unless it's contact, like, you're fighting or something like that. Uh, but... I do think that the, this episode being about a center fielder and he's an otaku who plays games and, and just watches anime. He like he's in love with baseball, but he doesn't want to play. He, he loves playing 2D baseball because 3D baseball is too much. Um, it was very interesting to see this episode. And as a person who's played center fielder uh, for years, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I'm going to tell, so, tell you this right now. Go everything ahead. about that I see in our forums, uh, everything that I see about Oblivion Battery just looks so uninteresting to me. It looks and, so terribly uninteresting that I can't give a fuck about anything they got going on. It's bad. I, it's rough. I don't <laughs> think I could tell you to watch. I think there are parts you would enjoy, but I'm going to be real. It's, they're so few and far between that I would be like, yeah, Polo can't watch this, bro. I just don't he, even he like baseball that much anyway. Like, it's just, I, ugh, I couldn't do it. Couldn't yeah, and, and I, I also I don't actually like the reason and I say this when I say I'm not a big sports person it's not that I don't like sports I would rather play sports that's that's the thing is that I've always been a, a runner and whatnot like that so I've always done that even when I stopped playing football and basketball and stuff I started doing like jujitsu in North Carolina and other stuff in Florida so it was like for me uh, the sports I've always been into, I just did them. So that's why I'm not like a huge sports person because I just do them. But I can't, I can't really like do them now because I'm getting older, bro. Uh, but yeah, man, Oblivion Batteries episode this week, center fielder actually was kind of on point. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I hear about Oblivion bla- Battery, my eyes glaze over. <laughs> All right, turn your battery off. You yeah, just, exactly. your battery power. My, my own battery <laughs> dies. I'm just like, uh. <laughs> I be trying. I be, listen, I be invested in watching what people type in on the forums. I'm just like, yo, I can't. Every time I try to get interested or try to seem interested, just don't be it. Um, I, I wouldn't even tell you, bro. I wouldn't even tell you to get try and fake it. Don't even fake it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try though. I really do. Um, I did catch up with. Let's see, how far did I catch up? Cause since I was on a treadmill for literally damn near like two hours, basically. Um, Delicious in Dungeon. I caught up quite a few episodes. I'm not fully caught up uh it's still great it's still mm-hmm. great it's, it's crazy it's a, it's a phenomenal show i figured i mentioned this is in dungeon because we haven't talked about it in a long time and it's still a really great show 
they, like, and I do feel like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I do feel like they're they are leaning a little bit away from the food now. But the story is developing so much more. Yeah. And I enjoy that. And it's kind of crazy because I was enjoying the food and I do enjoy that they still make food, but the story is there now. And I'm I'm like, I'm loving that. Let me put it in perspective for you. I stopped where where's my deli- there it is. I stopped around uh let me sorry y'all. I'm I'm doing this live. I stopped around, let me just see here. Sorry if y'all can hear that. You um I stopped around episode nine, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I didn't watch it until what three, four days ago. Um Where are you at now? I am on episode uh, twenty one. You give me a refresher. Wh- which one was that? Um no, don't don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I could do that. But basically, what I'm what I'm trying to say. Is that at episode nine, 10 and 11, I was getting tired of watching it. Like I, I, when I turned on 10 and, and, and 11, I'm like, okay, I remember why I stopped watching it because I was kind mm-hmm. of getting bored of the food port part of it. Um, even though it, something major happened at that point in time. And I'm like, oh, oh, that's huge. But those two episodes in particular were very much centered around the food aspect of it. And then something happens and it, picks back up to the main main story and it's like okay now we're getting back interested again so every time but every time they do the food now i don't i don't care about it anymore like i like i did at the beginning i just want to see them move forward and and learn more about the the overarching world and the people in it but now we're meeting we're meeting a group of people that's like oh shit watch out because this right they might be demons it's 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 very very much fun now to the point where I'm like more invested in the story than the delicious and dungeon part. I don't give a fuck about that anymore. I don't. And, that, and that's, that's all so I used cool. to watch it about. <laughs> you feel me? Though? Like that's so cool, bro. Like because it, it started with like we're gonna try and stink our teeth into you with the the food part. You know, like I just want to watch anime with and food. It worked. Food. It worked. It did work, and it, it it basically lost you, and then you went back to him and was like, nah, bro. The story is, is, is here now. <laughs> and yep. I, I did. It's like, as soon as that major pivotal moment comes back into play. Yep. And that story comes in, you're like, oh, no, it's some demons in the show. Yep. It's some demon demons in the show. And then there's more demons in the show. I was like, oh, no, this is crazy. And I, I, I can understand. Uh, yeah. It, I, yeah. <laughs> I was looking looking forward to that. I, I can't wait. Um, So let's, you, you said you had something else. But before we get into that. Mm-hmm. I do want to mention that um, let me just check the calendar here that we're probably going to do our summer preview on the on the uh, let's do it on next week actually mm-hmm. we're going to do a summer preview next week so the show that comes out June 18th will be our summer preview show so we're going to drop we're going to drop the question in the forms I'm a, I'm a, actually I'm gonna have to probably hit hit everyone with the at everyone tag in Discord to make sure that everybody knows this time because last time people missed the um the uh getting the previews in and in their scores and stuff so we're gonna tag people for the um the uh you're getting your sleeper picks for the summer season that's gonna start next week so if you have a summer pick if you're uh, one of our Patreon producers Rob Stone you can drop it in the, on the YouTube comments as he does. Or you can come to our forums in our Discord by going to mycheckwaifuwaifu.com, hitting the about section, joining the Discord, or you can add us on Twitter. I'm gonna put the question out on Twitter. Even though I haven't been on Twitter that much, I've just been scheduling tweets and, and letting it go. <laughs> but there you go. Um send us your sleeper picks for the summer. Uh so y'all can be a part of the show. We love to read y'all summer picks. We love to to read anything um you guys have for us on the show. But that in particular, we're gonna discuss. The, uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna pick our summer sleepers. We're gonna pick our most anticipated. We're gonna make our summer lists next week. So June eighteenth, the episode that drops June eighteenth. We record it on the sixteenth. So let's try to get it all before the sixteenth ends, et cetera, et cetera. Now, tell what you got for me that you said you wanted to uh, to bring up in particular for the show today. So we know obviously that Izakai is a genre. That we love over here, my check wife, wife, food. Um, but hear me out. 
I feel like it's something about these reincarnated that's hitting a little hard this season, especially because we got uh, reincarnated as a slime as well. Jabba's reincarnation as well. Re monster. We got a uh, seventh prince reincarnated seventh prince and reincarnated aristocrat. Right. Mm-hmm. But I want to focus on the reincarnated as seventh prince and reincarnated aristocrat. To me, they are very different, but oh, yeah. I love them. Because they're, they're very different, but they're still very similar. But they, I love them for those reasons, right? We have Aristocrat. And I, I am going to say this. I think I do like Aristocrat more. 100%. Um, because of what kind of character we have in ours, Luvon. Um, it's the characters, bro. These characters are, are, are so, like, thoughtful, in a sense, mm-hmm. that they make it compelling. Like, you want to watch it. I'm watching this week's episode. And I'm not saying it was, like, a heat week or anything like that, because there were some good episodes this week. Yeah. But I really love, like, the diplomacy. I love seeing that ours is a, is a kid still. Yeah. Um, and even well, comparing him to... Go ahead, go ahead. He's a teen, technically, right? Uh, well, ours was an adult that was reincarnated into this one, right? Right, while, right. W- while the seventh prince Lloyd, he was a like a teen in that same world that died and got reincarnated as the seventh prince. So they're right. as as similar as they are, they're still very different, which is so cool. But sorry, to, to, no, no, uh, you're good. But I'm, I'm talking about like you look at the 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 place that ours is in. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. Then you look at uh, in the world of where he is now. Right, but then you look at his subordinates, right? Because mm-hmm. ours, as far as we view him, right, we haven't technically seen his stats, so we don't know right what his stats are. Like. We don't point. know if him as a person is overpowered outside of his appraisal skill, because that is overpowered. And they, it's funny because everyone always talks about how good the appraisal skill is in an in an izakai, right? Yeah. But ours is actually ridiculous in terms of contextually looking at people and deciphering to the point where he's a, a lower level lord being beckoned and called on by higher people saying, hey, I think I need your help, man. Because yeah. <laughs> I need you just to, to use your talents to, to help. Yeah, don't go and too not, deep into I don't want to go too far, right? <laughs> but I, I do understand that like that aspect of the reincarnated aristocrat is so good. But then you hop over to reincarnate as a seventh prince, right? And he's in the seventh prince position where he's like the lowest of the princes, essentially. Not, not, but it's like no one really is paying him attention as he's going to be in line for the throne or anything like that. Right. But he's ridiculous. And I love these shows, like I said, for two completely different reasons, but they're still very similar because these characters are both overpowered. It's just the context in which their overpoweredness is, right? Their, their OPness <laughs> in, uh, awesome. in Apollo, in, a, in, in Polo's words. But these are two very polo and tell ass animes as far as I'm concerned. But for very opposing reasons. <laughs> I wanted to but I wanted to ask you, how are you feeling about these shows, bro? Yeah, these are probably and we're going to talk about this uh for the end of the the uh, month show. But these are probably two of some of the best shows this year so far. Um specifically. And I don't say that lightly. Like when we talk about Polo and Tell Last Anime, we talk about shows that we um, that we love that we cannot recommend to everybody else. These two shows in particular, I would recommend to the entire world. Like so, like I don't, I can't. Even though Isekai is our shit and Reincarnated is our shit, like we love those shows. We we give every single one of them a chance. Whenever we see Reincarnated as a poopy 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 head don't matter what it is <laughs> reincarnated <laughs> or isekai into whatever the world we don't give it a chance regardless that that is a polo until last thing however this is not a polo until last anime because of the simple fact is we can recommend it to everybody everybody <laughs> it's just that good um i don't i don't think we're the the sad part about having these two shows in particular is that i don't think we're going to have anything as good probably ever again Unless it's really, season, yeah. Um, unless it's season two of stuff like we getting wise, like a like the uh, the what's the ah uh, the assassin reincarnated assassin one. Oh yeah, that we talked about a few seasons ago that we loved. We getting the a second finest season, assassin. world's finest assassin. Yeah, we are getting a second season of that, but like I don't think we're ever going to get anything that's good ever again. It, and that that, that could unless be unless it's a season that, two. 
Yeah, you're, you're right though, because that is a season two, and then we got Jobs Reincarnation, which is a season two. We got right. Reincarnated as a Slime, and I I hate to say it, Remonster I do think is good in a lot of ways, um, but it's not as good as these two specifically, like from this season. Right, and Remonster is a polo until last anime. I can't recommend it to everybody, but I like it. it. I love and, it and, actually. And even for what happened in this most recent episode, bro, love it so it's like I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. It was good. Straight um, up. But like I, I love how how these two anime specifically what what makes them so like driving though isn't just that the characters are OP it's that there's so much going on in the world yeah. <laughs> there's so much going on in the world we always talk about that the world building is is pivotal is key to how these shows play out and I feel like I I hope they're not being slept on but yeah. like let's look at yeah. Reincarnated Aristocrat with a 67% is insane. Wow. Um, yeah, that's insane for me because the show, just in terms of story, is is already better than that. And I can, the means, the, the average score, mean score, 70 and 71% for uh, Seventh Prince. I think that could be higher too because what? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't even know. if we just go on based off the animation, when they pop off, they and they're popping all the way off. But we're actually talking about a character who is OP in an actual fight, but then he's making his entire like family and army OP. They're, they're I don't want to go too far into it, yeah, but they're, yeah, gotta they're all like thriving from like the innovation and ingenuity of this character. And it's like, these shows are crazy good. And they're, I think they, go ahead, go ahead. They're, they're so polar opposites that that's what makes them so great. Like, be, mm-hmm. like we always get these isekais. We always get these, um, these reincarnated shows all the time. What make these two shows in particular so unique is that one is one extreme and the other is the other extreme. One extreme is that one is super strong, Seventh Prince. The other extreme is one is finding himself around super strong people because of his ability. Like it's a, it's just great. It's a great concept. Mm-hmm. I do want to take this time to mention that for those of you who are unaware, we got news earlier earlier this week, like Monday this week that our favorite show of all time, our favorite isekai of all time, ReZero, is getting a 90-minute first episode. So, when that comes out in the fall, we are going to um, very much so binge that in, the, in like the, the first instant, the moment it launches. However, I do want to say- a live reaction? Uh, I wish we could. I, I do want to say this, though. Next, I think next season, we're going to do our rewatch of ReZero. So, mm-hmm. quick, for the uninitiated, we used to do these long-form rewatches of shows. Like, we did uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. What else did we do? You remember? Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, Bleach. Bleach. Um, I think those are the only two, right? The long-form well, rewatches? I, um, yeah, I think so, because... And I, and I did, like, an individual, like, One Piece one that I would have... Yeah, you, you were doing yeah. One Piece. I, and... I mean, Initial D isn't a, a long form, but it, it it was what I watched three seasons. Yeah, so we we do these long forms from time to time. So if you guys want to join us next season, um, which is literally at the end of this month, we're going to start ReZero uh, and watch it all the way through to be caught up for the fall. Um, we're going to get a, a, a set schedule with the episodes we're going to watch or whatever. But I'm excited too. I'm so excited. So. Stay tuned for that. We got a lot of stuff going, going it's on. It's the Reeves, bro. This might be the, the year of the Reeves. And you think so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad it's finally coming back, man. Like, finally. Silver Fox is coming back. Or White Fox. Sorry. We, we need a, we need an anime that's, that's called Reincarnated as a Polo and Tell Last anime. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> All right, Tell. So, so, before we get into the spoiler talk, let's talk about what we're spoiling first, and then we get to know my check waifu waifu. So we know we're doing Yadagarasu. Yadagarasu is a must. Jobless Reincarnation? It has to be Jobless Reincarnation. We, we want to start with that one? Yeah, we're going to start with Jobless Reincarnation, then go to Yadagarasu. And... Let's Windbreaker? Talk. Nah. Or what? Wouldn't. Jellyfish? No, let's let's do My Hero. I'm going I'm to explain okay. to you how I'm feeling about My Hero, and then you can, you can kind of bounce, you can just hear me out on what I got to say about that. Okay? Let's do it. All right, so now let's get to know my check wife waifu. This is, uh, I haven't done this in a long time, so forgive me. This is part of the show where you get to know us as host. 
It's where one of us rolls a random number generator. The other asks a question associated with that number and you get to know us a little bit better. Hey, not bad for somebody who hasn't done it in a year and a half. Okay, so I'm going to roll the random number generator to start us off since we're coming back. How many questions is it? It's 100. All right. 12. Make All sure right. you race it. I will. I will. Give me one second. Number 12. Goodness gracious. All right. Got to go all the way to the top of the list again. All right. What is... Okay. Well, we, I've, I know we both answered this before at one point, but what is your favorite anime soundtrack? <sighs> favorite anime soundtrack. Man, it's, it's tough because I, the first thing that popped in my head was one that's actually this season. Mm. But of, of all time, okay. <laughs> of all time, it, it is Clanat of all time. Okay. That soundtrack, every time they come on, no matter what the song is, it, it sends me back into that emotional state that I've always been in. However, if I had to go with this season, my favorite anime soundtrack is Windbreaker. They're fucking killing it soundtrack wise. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I can agree with that if I'm going with this season. I mean, the only other one I would possibly put up against it would be like Kaiju number eight. Yeah, but it really it's good. really those the, that intro and outro is like, I don't skip that at all, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like in, in the show, it's more of like, I don't feel like the soundtrack is what I'm paying attention to. Exactly. But Windbreaker, like that soundtrack really gets you in the mood. So I, I can agree with that for the season. Um, of all time, I have two. And if I'm really going... As far as I can say three. But of all time, it's between like Samurai Champloo. No? Nope. I can tell you, you know, what like, you I can tell you what your favorite soundtrack probably is. Let me know if I'm wrong. I, I'm about to tell you what what it is, but go ahead. Go ahead. No, you tell me. Go. I, I was gonna say that the other one is Parasite the Maximum. Nope. What is what do you, yeah, I know what do you, you think love it that is? one? I know you love that one. What, what what do you think it is? And maybe I'm projecting because I, I really wanted you to say this. Uh huh. Made in Abyss. Oh, well, yeah, god damn. I thought you would say that one. Like, that's the first thing that came to my head. But the issue is making me want to cry. Oh, the soundtrack, okay. (laughs) But no, I I feel you. It it is, it's sick. I I agree with you. You do, you literally get chills. I'm literally thinking about the Bondru scene, just him walking, bro. And that's what I thought you were going to say. Oh my God. (laughs) Or like, yo, it's it's so many different songs from Remain Abyss. That's what I thought you were going to go. I really did think you were going to go. From season one to season two to the movies. Yeah. Yeah, the soundtrack is crazy. That's an honorable mention. <laughs> we go through nah, that in there. It's both of our that's, honorable, that's mentions, honorable mention. That's crazy, <laughs> I, man. You just, you, just, you just messed up my whole, my whole, my whole shindig, man. I just, like, dude, I don't know because okay, honestly, I was gonna say clean that obviously for the emotional impact it had on me because mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say made in abyss. That just that nah, was just an automatic projection that I put on you, and that's my no. Fault. But you're not you're not wrong. You're not wrong because I'm just like I'm I'm like dang. That is that may, and I didn't think about it because I was already thinking like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go with 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 paradise, paradox, or, uh, parasite, parasite the maximum. I know you I'm love that one too, because I love that. I love that whole soundtrack. I listen to the whole soundtrack often. Samurai Champloo just it, it it vibes as like a as a as a like a vibe hip hop kind of classic almost. Sure, yeah. But made in abyss, you right, man. I am not a fan of Samurai Champloo's. Well, no, I'm not. Whoa, well, I was about to say something crazy. Uh, it's not that I'm not a fan of the soundtrack. I'm just what it is. The main one that Battle Cry always play. Yeah, yeah. I I just I don't when I hear it, I don't feel that much anymore Mm -hmm. because I've heard so much better soundtracks now. Yeah, it's been like two decades, really. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's just it's like it's tougher for me to say Samurai Sampoo because it's it's just so much more out there now. But it is a great soundtrack. I mean, I said it's a bad. It's not even close to bad, but. Y'all get what I mean. What a great question, though. What a great question. Yeah. All right. We're going to take this quick break. We'll be right back after this.
And welcome back to episode 257 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu, the spoiler half of the show. We're going to start with Mushoku Tinte, a.k.a. Jabba's Reincarnation, as the first show we're going to spoil. Um, Man, I'm... I'm just... Going back. Yeah, it's just so good. Um, My thought here, right? I love the way this is playing out. However, I am also afraid of how this is playing out. Right? Mm-hmm. I love how they're progressing through the labyrinth. Like, that's my favorite part about it. I love how it's kind of narrating and navigating us on how they're kind of running this thing. Mm-hmm. What I'm scared of is the Roxy and Rudy <laughs> dynamic because Roxy obviously has a thing for him, which they Very kind much of so. made super clear with, you know, is that your girlfriend? When when, when they mentioned uh, the the teleporter chick, Ni- Naya Oshi or whatever her name is, uh, it's very concerning at how okay. Rudy is going to handle it. However, that aside, the progression that we're getting as far as the labyrinth progression has been so great, and the episode go by so fast that it always feels like I'm watching it for ten minutes. It's it, it's so it's, it hurts my heart every single yeah. time because it's, so it's because you love it. I know. I love it so much. It's it's perfect dynamic. Um, somebody mentioned in the Discord. I believe it was all for one Matt, one of the Patreon producers. He said, um, "Rudy and and and, and Paul when they're together is just fire." It's, it's It might. I think he said it's like the perfect, um, the perfect team or something like that, <laughs> which is absolutely correct. Because I don't know, just their dynamic, their character dynamic is great. Go ahead, my fault. They they are two. They're entirely two different classes. Um, mm-hmm. even, even though technically Rudy can can do a bit of what he does, I wouldn't say he can do everything he does, but he right. definitely can do a bit of what he does. Um, and I don't think even obviously Rudy probably wouldn't show them all of his power because he is still technically ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Bodhi Godi or Body Gotti, whatever his name is, can can attest to that. Um, but. I do understand what you're saying with the the Roxy thing, right? Um, 
because that is scary especially con- considering like when she started off she's like i don't remember you no <laughs> i was worried i was like that was no, concerning bro. yeah that was big concern. i, I, I forgot that about don't that last <laughs> I, uh, I hope that don't last long but it's gone right it's just you know <laughs> the, the throw part made me die laughing though <laughs> right right, <laughs> right. but uh I, I was concerned there right mm-hmm. i'm so happy that things are better now now i think that realistically rudy's just gonna have two wives though yeah probably. And, and I, I say that for the fact that like we've already had the precedent set with his dad mm-hmm. that that is acceptable. Yep. Um, and it does it does kind of suck because I feel like that's gonna. I think I think he might have three. <laughs> yeah. To be fair though, they they set that precedent up with not only Paul, but they set it up with Sylphie too. Because mm-hmm. Sylphie even said like I don't care if I'm wife two or three or four or five like she said that this this season technically yeah in the first course so it's it's uh it's very much foreshadowed in this world that happens right it's very much foreshadowed that he's going to have her as want to have multiple wives but my my problem with that is i don't i know that that was already said it was already a president president it was foreshadowed essentially at the beginning of the season my problem is is that I f- still feel bad for Sylphie. And that's where I was going to go. Like, I, don't, like, I, I know it's going to happen probably, but. Yeah, he still has a baby that's about to be born. Exactly. He still has a whole wife at home. Exactly. And, and I personally don't think that uh, if you're going to have multiple wives that you should let one feel unattended to, especially, I mean, I, this is anime, so whatever. But, you know, I don't think that Sylphie should should go unattended uh, for too long. You know yeah, what I mean? It's already exactly. been over three months at this point. Um, she's pregnant. She's basically, she's through her first trimester, essentially. Yeah. We got a lot to uh, to look at here. So, um, I do think he has some explaining to do and some talking to do with Roxy. Yes. Uh, and that's yes. what's going to be interesting, right? Because I do think it's going to set a different dynamic up for them. Um, I think it's going to set up a different dynamic for them. But I don't think it's necessarily going to change too much. If anything, and hear me out, <laughs> I think it's going to make his party ridiculous. And I say this because he got two of the most ridiculous mages <laughs> as wives. Straight up. Straight up. Yeah. That- and the- and, we, and I, this is me, me presuming that she's going to be his wife because I don't see her going anywhere. And it could flip. It could flip where she just like, I don't want to mess with Rudy at all. That could be a, a thing. But I, I do think that he's going to have them both as wives. And it's like he's going to have two ridiculously strong mages as wives. And I think him being another ridiculously strong mage just sets them up to be a, a magical household of craziness yeah imagine what the kid is going to be for both Sylphie and roxy if they have one imagine what that would look like she's a god what, what she said king tier king class mage now yeah. mm-hmm. he he has well, basic king class already right or no she, she, yeah, she became a king, king class, class yeah yeah so and then rudy is unlimited mana basically and that gets passed down gene wise that'd be fucking insane yeah insane so i I don't know whatever all i know is that this episode was beautiful let's talk about uh let's go check this this next level they're going into (laughs) what do you think this red teleporter that they're teleporting in shout out to rudy for thinking outside the box when it came to this room and finding it under the stairs but what do you think that's going to lead to well red is bad um in context for shows Yep. I love red. <laughs> I wish my microphone was red. But I so here's my thing, right? I think that they really set a, a precedent for like those like um what do they call them? The dragons? Uh the like dragon god dude, whoever that Rudy ran into and almost got killed Oyster, with. Yeah. yeah. So basically my my thing is is that I feel like we have to do that again. We have to run into somebody. You think he's going to run into that here? Not necessarily that person specifically, but what is the 
what's the grand reason for this labyrinth in terms of like who built it and and what is the what full purposes it serve who lives here and why why is it have so many teleporters why is it so tricky you know that's what i'm trying to figure out there's a whole book on how to get through this labyrinth and how to get through these portals and stuff like that but it's like i feel like there's so much there has to be something game changing here especially with hear me out we're worried about what the man got said <laughs> There has to be something here. So, yeah. That's going to make Rudy regret. And that's my gut check. There has to be something scary. And I say scary because there has to be something that challenges the party. I think Rudy's going to lose. And I feel like we got that, that setup we talked about last week where he's so, going to lose Paul. So, it's this, it's this YouTube channel. Now, this YouTube channel is dope. It says any yeah. news, any news that I watch. Um, he, what he does is he does like things that are, that are in, um, that are, not spoilers like he doesn't go ahead he stays mm-hmm. with with he stays within uh the, the show so what he does is he breaks down um what happened in the manga versus what happened in the anime so like he, he basically gives you the context that wasn't in the anime into the manga uh, from the manga or the light novel in this particular case he said something that resonated with me so well right mm-hmm. this, this is what he said he said that in the manga um I believe he said it. Somebody in the manga, I believe it was Rudy in the manga, thought that the man guy might have told him that terrible advice about staying at the school in order to get him to do the opposite. Mm. So it wasn't necessarily for him. Like, this is what Rudy monologue was thinking himself because of because he was thinking, like, if the man guy told him to stay instead of or told him to go instead of stay, he probably would have stayed. To, to to like because he felt like it was just it wouldn't feel right for him to leave Sylphie right, but because the man God told him to stay he, he felt like maybe he was actually trying to get him to leave by by doing the by by saying the opposite I don't mm-hmm. I don't know how he he worded in the video extremely well Andy News is fucking articulate as fuck when it comes to relaying the information that wasn't in the uh, show but that was in the manga he's great he's it it was a great great breakdown of of, of that process so when i thought about that i'm like damn so maybe maybe the man god did say all that crazy shit like to sleep with the the dog and the cat girl all this crazy shit just to get him to do the opposite so he would go save um go go save them because the man god was the reason why he went to the school and the man god was the reason why he got that book in the first place Mm-hmm. Right, the, the teleporter book. So the man got sent right. him to the school. He got the teleporter book, and then he tells him the, the complete opposite in order to force him essentially to go save his mom. Let's go uh, by by giving him oh you 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 know reverse psychology type deal. Now, and I'm like, well, that would ahead. make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> now I do feel like we we talked about that and we said that that could be a scenario, right? You're right. And I do think that if that is the case, yo, go man guy. But I'm still scared, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. I'm still worried. I'm still yeah, because it's that like, could not be the case at all, and it could be some fucked yeah. up shit coming. Because because like like you said, if he's not going ahead and he's trying to keep up with what's current in it, we don't truly know. We don't but know when we at all. Get there, bro. It's gonna. I I do think that. I and then this is just like you know anime sense i guess something huge does have to continue to happen um because this anime does not have moments of like because this was huge already right yeah yeah it doesn't have moments where like you you can have some reprieve and be like oh i'm so happy i'm relaxed and this was good and everything that happened before this felt like a slice of life and there was so much love and and development and we got all of this nice kindness i don't trust none of that bro you're right. No, you're, you're no, absolutely right. They did that in the first season, and all of a sudden we got teleported. Yep. Turning point was crazy. And yeah, it is because there's never there's never a time where t- turning point is good. So for it to be that whole conversation of of you should stay and not go mm-hmm. to be considered a turning point is massive. But but again, we don't we don't know. We don't fucking know. And it's 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 frustrating, but I can't wait to see where it goes. I truly can't. I truly, absolutely can't wait to see. All right, moving on. Yadagaratu. Spoilers for Yadagaratu episode. Ten. Oh, yeah, episode ten of Yadagaratu. We just spoiled episode nine of Jobless Reincarnation. I'm sorry for not doing that sooner. I got to get better I, at that. 
I do have it in notes. I should have said it. Yeah, it, it will be in the show notes though. So but good stuff. But Yadagratu, this is literally the best episode this week by by far. Uh, close. Jobless was very close. But I do think I do think I remember saying that I don't think the brother's really evil. Mm-hmm. But I think you did say that. I think but, you said that. But to be fair, the big guy, I I thought he was evil. Yeah, I wasn't certain on him, but yeah. For the twist to be that Al Al Alfasa Alfusa Alfusta whatever his name is As- Asafusa Asafusa Alfusa whatever his name is for him to yeah, be bro. really the bad guy was so fucking well done like everything about that was well done it was unexpected I had no idea it was coming I can't even pretend mm-hmm. like I'm I'm even close to knowledgeable I just didn't think that the brother was really evil but I did not know I did not see this coming essentially. Yeah. And then, then the way it was uh, all unveiled, how uh, Yukia found out and 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 went to them, like it was all so fucking cool, dude. It was just, it was layered so perfectly. A beautiful episode, a perfect episode. However, I am concerned about the way Yukia felt about them saying, "Oh, you didn't really want me. You wanted the Northern Blood." That had me like, but dude, come on, man. You yeah. know. I- and it's like, so I think that as someone who has, you know, royal blood, right? You got to know you can't just go un, unattended to it and people don't know anything about you. There's going to be somebody out there that matters. Right. But the thing is, is that I get it, right? Because we do know that technically this is a very uh, Edo period world, so to speak, right? Yeah. And, um, Royals matter. That's that is a thing. This is not a uh, this is a, a classism thing. Yeah. Um, and even even when we talk about the context of what we're seeing already, even when we thought the brothers could be divided, right? Like the brothers are now on the same side. That's still classism because yeah. the other brother is the older brother. The mother of the younger brother. What's up? Go ahead. Go ahead. Real, real quick. Sorry. It's crazy how they. Everything that we were talking about last, I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, how, how we don't know why it was like that. We learned this episode. Sorry. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. But we, so, so yeah, the, the older brother is, should have been rightfully to the throne. Because but, it was her, it was her, the, the empress right now, her right? actual born, born son. And she don't care nothing about the current true Kino. You know what I mean? Yep. So like you, like we, like you said, you said that last week, right? Yep. Um, so she don't care nothing for him, but we do also have the, the context that uh, the brother, he's all for family. Yep. He's trying to ride for his brother. So um, good. It was so good. And I, I love it, bro. I love it. It was so good. It had me like, Cause like you said, the the Atsu the Atsufasu thing, Atsufusa, whatever his name is, when when that happened, I mm. was I, I I agree because I I, he, I thought he croaked. <laughs> All right. I'm like, dang, and I, and I was salty too because I was like, I can't believe they just pulled that card. Yeah, I was I like, them. I'm not gonna, I'm like, I'm not gonna like this, I'm not gonna like this anime after this episode because I'm like, why it just that that was so like cliche. But no, <laughs> he the op. He's the op. <laughs> I love it. I was the like, whole Yo. time. the whole time. And then, then the people that I thought were the ops, um, come to the rescue. Like, you know what? It this was show, so well done, bro. Definitely, I definitely feel like it's it has to be getting slept on. There's no way it's not slept on. Yeah, I don't. I was taken back by it all. Like this episode was so good because of of not only what we found out but again where it could possibly lead i have no idea what's next at all like no clue yeah and And that's what i love about it the most i look forward to watching this every single week yeah and i agree with you the gut check on this is 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 tough um because when we when we think about with with like yukia right i think that obviously he has to just come to his senses and be like you know what bro these people will care for me regardless. They, right. they, yeah, that they might have wanted royal blood, but they treated me even when I was publicly and known, like because no one else in the castle knew who he was. So right. it's not like they shared the details on who he was because they would have treated him very differently. They wouldn't have been 100%. chasing him around, and his life wouldn't have been necessarily at risk as much. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. he would have been treated not like the prince, but somewhere up there amongst 
the Royals. You know, he would have had a seat at the table, but they didn't give him one. So I feel like that's something he has to understand. That, like, we didn't try and displace you. We were we wanted you here because of your talents, but we also didn't want to, you know, displace you for that. We were trying to make you make sure you were comfortable where you were. And I, I think I think he has to recognize that that's that's real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, hard to tell, but all I know is this show is fantastic, man. A hundred percent. I'm I'm glad we're watching it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that it's like continuing to, to push forward. And we got a lot to go. Like we got ten more episodes of this to go. Or Yeah. Yeah, ten more episodes. So it's like where can we go next with ten more episodes? And it's like it's not like the ten episodes are dis dissatisfying, right? Where they're showing pieces and bits and pieces and bits and pieces and bits, like it does with other shows that are like longer form shows, like they're yeah. twenty five or so. It's it's showing significant story beats almost every episode that is so significant to the story that it's like you you can't miss an episode or you're yeah. gonna be lost, you're gonna be confused. It's not stuck in this action bag. It's like yep. it's literally giving you diplomacy. It's giving you uh figuring out how how we're gonna navigate to the future that we want, right? Yeah. Um, I think I think that this is this is this, and it might not devolve into like a huge war, like you said. But with the fact that you know, I hope don't I hope Yuki don't get exposed for who he is, right. because what 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 does that do? Does that cause a war, like a large scale war, or what does it yeah. cause? You know, we don't. And I, I like you're right, right? Because that house was what dismantled essentially, yeah. but. What what does that does that even hold any weight currently in in the state of the world? You know, so I, I do have I I have questions. I just don't know, like you said, what to gut check for this. Yeah, it's impossible. Um, great show all around though. Okay, moving on, but uh, to last, but certainly not least, and this one isn't going to be long because it's my hero. Um, this was uh, I will say this. This was better because it's, I'm, I'm going to explain to you what happened because you said you missed it this week. So I'm going to just, even though you read it, so I'm explaining you going you going to know exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. They start uh, mm-hmm. my, the, 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 my hero, uh, my hero academia Academy or whatever. They, they start the plan. The plan goes for where the, they come out the portals and they put some in these, in these cages and they push the portals out when they push mm-hmm. the portals out through these different areas. Um, Deku gets sent with Toga somewhere else. So he sends somewhere with with Toga and their crew. Uh, Shigaraki is in the in the uh, coffin um, area. I think they call it coffin of death or some shit like that. Uh, with Genist and Bakugo and, and 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 them and everybody just separated. It was and I just this is what I wanted to say. It was a good plan. The way they explained it was well done. But the fact that this entire episode was just them explaining what that plan was and it being uh, executed to where. This is what happened in the, the entire episode. I'm explaining it to you, but this is what happened. They come through the portals. They put them in a cage. They send them through portals. That was the entire episode in a nutshell. The rest of it was just them explaining the plan and how the plan came came to fruition. Which and was, then they did it. Which was cool. Which was cool, and they did it. But what I'm the, the problem I have is that the entire episode didn't get anywhere. Nobody mm-hmm. did anything yet. Like it doesn't. The fight doesn't start until next week, probably. Are they and, milking it? They definitely milking it because like now that the fight is finally about to start between all these different groups. The the problem I have with the episode, while it was a good episode, it was just spent the entire time explaining what the fuck was going on, which was cool. It was cool to see, but I don't think it needed to take the entire episode to do that. Um, yeah. I just I don't know if I'm in, invested in my hero no more. I think it overstayed his welcome for me, period. But I, I, I do want to see it to the end. Like, I need to see it to the end, which it almost feels like it's, like you said, it's coming up. It feels like it's coming up real quick. It's it's right. It's right there, bro. Like, I promise you, I feel like after this season is over, we're, we're at the finale next season. And next season. yeah, I would say next season we'd be at the finale. And the thing is, for me, is that, and I said this last year, I think, the manga feels like it's overstated as welcome for me. I, I don't feel excited for this ending. And yeah. that sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just it's sad because I used to love it. And then last it's, season was so good. 
what did, what did you used to say earlier that it was campy when we first started you, you just talked about campy anime mm-hmm. that's what this feels like like it's it's just dwelling in this like i hate to say mediocrity but it's like dwelling in this space of like they're milking it for money that's what it kind of feels like with like what you just explained i have no idea why this didn't start because even in the manga it felt like two seconds probably it felt well yeah but like if you got 14 pages it went this is the plan boom they did it and then it got it got real like it was already a, a punch thrown in that 14 chapters or 14 pages so it was like that's crazy that nothing yeah. real happened and let me let me let me spe- let me slightly clarify what they did was in because in the episode shigaraki they they focused on that cage in particular right yeah they basically, that's important yeah they basically showed okay we we put shigaraki in his cage the walls are electrified by uh, charge all the charged people at the bottom or whatever. And you got our girl, um, whatever the fuck her name is, Cloney Lady, summoning different pieces of the floor and replacing the floor as they get decayed by Shigaraki. So that, they're explaining all that shit. The, the 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 bunny chick that everybody seems to love is basically dead. I think oh. like she she got hit with all them fingers and got spiked up. If she's still alive, I'm I'm done. I'm just over. Her. <laughs> I'm over her. She should be. She should have been dead already, but um, and that and that's pretty much the fight. And like Best Genius was throwing his his whips at the fuck at Shigaraki, and Shigaraki was bloom, 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 blowing him back. And that was that was the most punches that was thrown, but it was so insignificant that I didn't even need to yeah. mention it because it was pretty much just them taking the teleporters to the different places. And now it looks like next episode is gonna focus on Toga and and Deku. Yep. Um. Hopefully. I, the, the fact that she, uh, and the fact that he didn't sense it because it's not hatred, it's love, was pretty cool. I'm like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> but yeah. it's like it, it's it's it feels like the show's gonna get in its own way, um, which <laughs> which is pretty sad to say because I I, I, I did like it. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm not even gonna tell you what what they're gonna say next or what's gonna happen next. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I would I, hope not. I think you will certainly. I think that you will enjoy some aspects of it. Mm-hmm. I can see what you will enjoy. Yeah. But I, I can also see what you will hate and I, I'm ready to hear it. <laughs> I'm super I'm super excited for, for next week's episode though to start the, the summer preview. Because I right? like I need to I need to just look at I, I wanna it's tempting to go look at it early, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna wait until next week, next Sunday when we record, which is June sixteenth. Remember y'all. June sixteenth, we're recording, so give us your sleepers this week um, that you're listening to this episode. Uh, so, June sixteenth, twenty twenty four. If you listen to this years later, uh, give us your sleeper picks for summer. And um, what you could do for us too would be a big help. Is what's up? Uh, I was thinking that we should make a, a place. Right here, where it says "Follow me at King Taliano on all social media." <laughs> you can follow me on all social media. I'm at Polo Born Fly. Uh, make sure you follow our social media. That might check White on Twitter, and that might check White Fool on Instagram and TikTok. And as always, might 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 check. check, 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 check. To Mike Chank Waifu Waifu. Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you?